You're watching The American on ESPN. Welcome into Denton, Texas on a beautiful day on the campus of UNT, an early spring day and an awesome chance to really uh, start up a rivalry as the North Texas Mean Green take on Tulsa for the first time as American Athletic Conference rivals. Two teams that are really hot right now and feeling loose heading into a big weekend series. And welcome inside Lovelace Stadium. I'm John Little alongside Smacker Miles. Great to have you with us as well. A big reason, one of the big reasons these teams are really hot right now is awesome shortstop play right now. Shortstops are important in any matchup, but especially in this one. Tulsa's Amani Edwards is their impact player for the game. She's hitting over 400 with 20 RBIs so far this season. Against Oklahoma State this week, she was two for three with a triple. An unbelievable stat line against highly ranked Oklahoma State. There's one of those hits right up the middle. And it gets beyond the outfield. She ends up with a triple on that at bat and the celebration to match. For UNT, Sierra Simon is their shortstop. She's hitting 367 with 22 hits on the season. She has been dominant on the left side of the field for the mean green. She has been consistent in the batting order. There, she makes a great play, getting the ball to first, out at the bag. There, she strikes it up, up the middle, all the way to the fence. She has been powerful in her at-bats and consistent as well, earning that three-hole spot. Absolutely, and so this is a great matchup. Two of the top three teams in the league, two of the teams tied for the top spot in the conference. It's going to be a big weekend series. The first pitch of game one is next. Welcome back to a gorgeous day in Denton. Not much wind, a rarity for spring here at Lovelace Stadium. John Little back alongside Smacker Miles as Tulsa gets ready to lead it off in the top of the first inning. And this Tulsa order is incredibly powerful. We're talking about a team that averages 5.9 runs per game and has some of the leading hitters in the league. Mackenzie Denson leading off Haley Morgan, followed by Amani Edwards. Clara Skaggs in the cleanup hole, followed by Abby Jones and Caitlin Bearpaw in the bottom of the lineup. Celeste Wood, Emma Vickery is the catcher. She's back in the lineup. And Kennedy Kramer, the designated player. For the North Texas Mean Green, they will start Mackenzie Childers. She is the reigning American Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Week after a really good week against UTSA. And uh, she's starting to find her groove right now, Smacker. Childers has been so much more consistent lately. She has been much better in her walks to strikeouts ratio. Right now, she's five and three on the season with a 4.4 ERA. She's thrown just under 50 innings. And she is this week's American Conference Pitcher of the Week. Terrific performances against UTSA. Started two of those matchups in San Antonio. A series that North Texas won two games to none after sweeping their season opening American Athletic Conference series a couple weeks back. And we get underway with the first pitch ball from Childers. And Childers had started out this season really struggling with uh, her command, but it's starting to come around. Mackenzie Denson, meanwhile, having an outstanding season, hitting 435 at the top of this order. And you cannot disagree with that. 435 is pretty impressive in any baseball, softball scenario at any level. What an outstanding performance for her so far this season. And Tulsa is a team with a lot of speed, including here at the top of the order with Denson. And a 2-0 pitch is in for the first strike. By the way, our home plate umpire is Rick Boyer at first base, Megan Fisher and Kenneth Rice on a Beautiful day from Denton. Two one, slap down to third. Great play by North Texas. Easy play, Skaggs over to Wood as we get a look at the North Texas defense. This first matchup between North Texas and Tulsa in a few years. Across the infield, you got Gamble at first, Smith at second, Simon at short, and Medford at third. Outfield left to right, Rainey Epperson and Ibarra, and Kaylee Christensen out there to catch. Childers. First pitch, rides just a little bit high. 
to the number two hole hitter, Haley Morgan. Morgan was the leadoff hitter last season for Tulsa, and Tulsa head coach Chrissy Strimple says, we decided to go ahead and switch that up for this season. It's really worked out for this team, and Morgan having a good year as well, 20 RBIs. One and one. Morgan has that home run type power. The ability to lift the ball out of the out of the uh, park. Five extra base hits on the season. Childress trying to find the strike zone early. She's been all around it. There have been times this year where she struggled to find or throw a strike. That hasn't necessarily been the case. This one lifted in the air to right field, coming on for it and charging hard toward the line. Catabara puts it away easily in right field. Two up, two down, and a good start defensively for North Texas against this Tulsa team that hits the ball so well. Ibarra did a really good job charging the ball, coming from the, the outfield towards the infield. Probably a little bit easier to see the ball and calling off her second baseman to make the play herself. North Texas would love to put Tulsa down one, two, three, but Amani Edwards has other ideas. Edwards has been such an incredible fire starter from the three hole. That 409 average, the senior from Tomball. Highlighted her off the bat. Been outstanding defensively and offensively as well. And really brought a lot of power to this offense in the three-nothing shutout midweek victory over a top ten team in Oklahoma State. 1 1 from Childers, fouled back 1 and 2. Oklahoma State ranked in the top five going into that game. What an impressive midweek win for the Golden Hurricane. An in state opponent. That's always fun to get the upset against someone that you com compete with so familiarly, especially through club ball. I'm sure a lot of that team is familiar with the Golden Hurricane. Another one fouled off. And you've got a lot of speed up at the top of this lineup. And Amadi Edwards leading the league in steals with 12 on the season. It's a big reason as well, the speed that Tulsa has more triples than any other team in the nation with 16. This one on the ground to short. Easy play across as Simon throws out her counterpart. A 1-2-3 go the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and a chance for North Texas in the bottom of the first up next. Exit 84, it's where 35W ends and where the world begins. I think that's an official slogan here at the University of North Texas. <laughs> Welcome back into Lovelace Stadium. North Texas is batting order. The starting lineups, Ibarra leading it off with Medford and Simon batting second and third. Kaylee Gamble, Kayla Smith, and Kaylee Christensen, Sparks, Rainey, and Epperson rounding out the bottom of the order for North Texas. Trying to get their offense to come around, and uh, they have been uh, striking the ball really well here in conference play, but they've only got one player uh, hitting over 300 this season and a batting average of 256 as a team as the first pitch is in from Mara Moore. Moore, the starting pitcher for Tulsa, and she's got a lead on everybody to maybe the, be the pitcher of the week in the American Athletic Conference after a two-hit shutout victory over Oklahoma State last time out. Check swing, and Ibarra does not go around. Three career no-hitters for Mara Moore. Eight and four record, 3-11 ERA, making her 14th start of the year. Working quickly, and hit on the ground to the right side, and Ibarra finds a hole. A single for North Texas, the first hit of the game here in the bottom of the first. That's so huge for the Mean Green to get that first base runner on and to be without any outs with a runner on base is so huge as far as manufacturing runs. So that's an exciting start for UNT. See if North Texas can take advantage against a great pitcher in Moore and a swing and a miss by Morgan Medford on that off speed. Medford, the third baseman, 
just stepping into a starting role, missing a lot of time early this season with a wrist injury. But, uh, boy, having her in the lineup is a game changer. The senior from Denton who spent four years in Stephenville at Tarleton State, a wave and a miss, 0-2. Sometimes that one piece of the lineup changes everything and makes things click, and Medford has been that for the Mean Green lately. O2 pitch, and Medford offers, spoils one. Foul down the third base side. Medford's been an outstanding leader for this team, as you alluded to, and it was something that Rodney DeLong really didn't know how great of a leader she was until uh, she got to town and in the fold with the University of North Texas. And it's hurt not to have her on the field, but uh, she's been kind of a coach while she's been off the field. Another 0-2 pitch spoiled once more by Medford. Medford in only a few games of work. This is only her fourth start, her fifth game overall, but she's hitting 357, five hits and 14 at bats, making good contact as well. Two strikeouts in her 14 at bats. This one on the ground is short, and that will move the runner. Morgan Medford does what she is supposed to do there. And there's a runner at second with one down for Sierra Simon. Medford makes contact and moves the base runner along. That's all you can ask from her, especially guarding the plate with two strikes. So a win as far as being down in the count and still moving the base runner. Told you all about Sierra Simon in the open and what a season she's had. She's the only player for North Texas coming in. The batting average over 300 and cuts through on a bunt. It's 0-1. 367 on the season and Medford was batting 357 before that last advancement of the runner, however, it's, she had only played five games thus far. Simon's been in the lineup in all but one game this season. Simon turns on one and ricochets it foul. Simon, the junior out of Crockett. Fantastic power from that lower half. Six extra base hits on the season. Slugging 5.33. In the air and snagged at third base. Skaggs stays right with it for Tulsa. That was on a line, but Skaggs is equal to it at third. Simon rips it at what looks like it's going to be right up the third base line, but it's the line drive is caught by the third baseman. Not an opportunity to advance the runner. And now it's a completely different scenario with two outs and a runner on second compared to one out and a runner on second. And it brings up Kaylee Gamble. Gamble, the 250 hitter. Four home runs to go along with four doubles this season. Gamble out of Oklahoma City. Takes a pitch for a strike. A lot of Oklahomans on both teams in this one. We are just remarking before the game about what a great softball state Oklahoma is. This riser waved at and missed by Gamble, one and two. Oklahoma and Texas are great softball states at the club level for recruiting as well as at the college level. Moore leaves one outside, two and two. Moore trying to work herself out of a leadoff single by Kat Ibarra. Ibarra with good speed at second base. Gamble would love to give North Texas the advantage in this first game of a three-game set in Denton. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Kaylee Gamble can't catch up with that off-speed pitch down low and inside. And Mara Moore able to work herself out of a jam. No runs on a hit, and one runner left on base. Tulsa and North Texas scoreless after one. 
Welcome back into Denton. Two of the top teams in the American Athletic Conference tied at the top of the standings. And tonight, just gorgeous. 68, a little bit humid, but wins out of the Northeast at 10. And that means it is coming in a little bit here at Lovelace Stadium. A lot of times this time of year, you'll have a gusty south wind. This really plays as a hitter's park when that's the case. But uh, the wind coming in today and no scoring through the first inning. I'm John Little, back alongside Smacker Miles. Top of the second, 3-4-5. Coming up for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and Clara Skaggs, the junior third baseman. 1-0 is up high, 2-0. Skaggs doubled twice and was a huge part of that win over Oklahoma State on Tuesday for Tulsa. Skaggs is hitting 392 on the season. She has one home run and 21 RBIs. The junior has been really dominant so far this season. She's the top of the order in the second inning for the Golden Hurricane. Leads the team in slugging at 6.08. Takes one on the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. North Texas struggling through the early portion of their schedule. Playing some SEC teams in there. Playing a really difficult non-conference schedule. Coach DeLong said, ah, it's probably a miscalculation on my part, as this one's spoiled by Skaggs. But of course, the hope is, even though the team didn't play extremely well, wins losses wise, through the non-conference, that on the other end of that, you're able to perform a lot better because of the competition that you've seen. Foul tip for a strike three. So Skaggs not able to catch up with that one from McKenzie Childers. Childers, four up, four down. Here's another look at Childers. Third strike of the at-bat. She gets four up, four down. A huge start and a huge confidence builder for any pitcher. You mentioned those non-conference games, and of course it's really hard to play tough competition, nationally ranked opponents. But the Mean Green faced a lot of those teams and are now able to have the competition slow down to, a cent, to an extent and to be confident going into conference play. And so far, five and one in the conference, it's paid off. And they have to play two of the teams that are predicted to be near the bottom of the league early on. And so now you step up in competition a little bit. And the Tulsa team that made the American Athletic Conference championship game last year. And a team that uh, is right up there at the top of the league. And for both teams, they're their toughest conference competition so far. The early standings don't tell the whole story, but they're both tied for for the first spot in the conference, but with four other teams, so or with three other teams. So it's a four-way tie at the top, and this season will definitely shake that up. Charlotte lost to ECU, by the way, today, uh, to East Carolina, who picked up their first conference victory. And so that takes Charlotte to 5-2, and two, but you got Florida Atlantic, as you mentioned, North Texas, and Tulsa. Tied at the top of the league standings. We'll show those to you in a moment. Abby Jones, the second baseman, up from the left side. The 2 1 in there for a called strike. 2 and 2. An in control performance so far by McKenzie Childers, the pitcher of the week in the American 5 and 3 coming in. An ERA that is constantly improving at 446. This one down low and Jones holds up, three and two. The first inning or two can be so telling on whether a pitcher is on or not. So this has been a huge start for Childers and another statement about how consistent she's been as of late. Three, two pitch, Jones. She's gonna need another payoff pitch as she fouls that one off. Jones, one of these players for Tulsa with a lot of speed. She's 10 for 10 on the bags this season. If she can get on, and Katie bar the door. Jones coming in, hitting 348. Just another one of these players for Tulsa, hitting above 300 on the season. Another 3-2 pitch, swung on and missed, strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for McKenzie Childers and two down in the top of the second. Here's another look at that third strike. She gets her on the outside right, corner of the plate. Golden Hurricane reaching but unable to make contact. An impressive start for Childers. 
And it brings up Caitlin Bearpaw. Caitlin Bearpaw, a right fielder, the junior, fouling one off to start things out. Bearpaw has been a revelation this season, having a career year for Chrissy Strimple. Two ninety nine with three bombs. Also has walked ten times, most on the team. Takes this one for a called strike, however. It is 0 and 2. And Childers is in control. <laughs> on the corner for a called strike three. And McKenzie Childers strikes out the side. Salsa goes down one, two, three. Couple strikeouts swinging, and then Bearpaw can do nothing but look at a beautifully painted outside corner. And after one and a half, North Texas and Tulsa scoreless here in 10. ESPN's Major League Baseball coverage this season begins with opening night presented by Scott's this Thursday. World Series champion Texas Rangers host the Chicago Cubs at 7.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. It's a thing I understand they're pretty excited about in this North Texas region is World Series victories. As the first pitch is hit in the air to center field and it dies right in front of the center fielder, Haley Morgan. And Michaela Smith, the second baseman, has a leadoff single, second in as many innings for North Texas. Those leadoff singles are so important, as you just mentioned. She finds shallow outfield and gets the ball to drop right into that sweet spot. It's tough to get for either of the, the outfielder or the shortstop from there. Now, one thing that Tulsa has done a great job of this season is holding runners. They do not give up. A lot of stolen bases as the first pitch is inside to Kaylee Christensen, the catcher for ball number one. As a team, Tulsa has thrown at nine of the 16 runners trying to swipe bags this season, and that is absolutely outstanding. Trying to touch up Mara Moore as she misses outside. Two balls and no strikes. Christensen, the catcher, up from the right side, 246 on the season. She's from just down 380 in McKinney. Home run. 10 batted in for the senior. The 2-0 pitch. Great pitch on the inside corner. Them in a tough pitch to hit, and Moore paints that inside part of the play. Here's another look at that last pitch. It goes straight to the inside corner. A tough decision and a tough ball to hit. Or it's just a bulldog. She gets it done in the circle. This one rides inside, three balls and a strike. And really, it, Chrissy Strimple says she's got four aces on her team, four players that want the ball every single time out. But Mara Moore is just the bulldog among them. There's a 3-1 pitch. Hit on the ground, left side, and a base hit. Back-to-back -back singles as Smith heads to second. Christensen hit it first, and it brings up Tatum Sparks with two on and nobody out. Here's another look at that base hit. Strikes it into the outfield through third base in the shortstop, and it's a huge base hit for the Mean Green to have two on, no outs. This is a huge run-scoring opportunity. See if Sparks is asked to move the runners. Showing bunt. Pitch right down the heart for a called strike. Tatum Sparks, the sophomore. Hitting 246 on the season. But another one of those players from Eastern Oklahoma may be called to move the runners here. Another bunt. A really nice one out in front of the plate. The turn on to first is in time, but a sacrifice bunt by Tatum Sparks puts Smith at third and Christensen at second. Can't do it much better than that.
here's Sparks' flawless bunt. She lays it down right where you would want her to. She puts it right inside the right field line. She's nearly safe at first. Yeah, almost then, beat it out. Yeah, what an impressive bunt. And Coach DeLong talked about manufacturing runs and playing some of those highly ranked opponents and how they had to learn to do that with smaller ball. And that is an example of having learned that lesson in flawless execution and moving batters along the base path. So Molly Rainey, another one of these players from Oklahoma. Of course, Rodney DeLong had a long stint as a head coach in the high school ranks in Oklahoma at Cash High School. Swung on and missed for one and one now. And such a big time for the Mean Green as they've got two runners in scoring position and one down. But it's the bottom of the order. Can Rainey get it done? Moore comes home. Up high, two balls and a strike to Molly Rainey. Moore, really good off-speed game. See, so she's able to get to those pitches on this at bat. The 2-1 outside on the rise. Ball, and it is three balls and a strike. Didn't expect Mara Moore to struggle with um, finding the plate in this one. Uh, but there have been times this season where Tulsa... Fifty-seven strikeouts, but thirty-six walks on the season. Opponents batting two thirty-nine. Three and one, first base open. Rainey waved at and missed. Three and two. Moore trying to get out of a jam. Here's the payoff pitch. Lifted down the left field line. It is playable. And what a great throw home. Very good decision by Michaela Smith not to try to come home as McKenzie Denson rolls over to grab it in foul territory and throws a strike home. There are two down for Jody Epperson. Big play for the Golden Hurricane between Moore and the the left fielder making the catch and the connection to stop the Mean Green from scoring that run. That was a huge, gutsy play and timely for Tulsa. So Jody Epperson looking for a clutch hit. Still with first base open, takes the first pitch outside. But Epperson is a player that more and more would really love to go ahead and sit down with Catabara on deck, but a 255 average this season for Epperson, making her 18th start. This one down low just a bit, 2 and 0. Oh. And pretty consistently, more and more has been behind in the count. Epperson from Crandall, out an hour and 20 minutes to our southeast. Here's the 2 0. -oh. And that's hit off the fist into short right field. Great play as Abby Jones ranges back to make the two-handed catch going toward the foul line. And that will end the inning. So North Texas picks up a pair of leadoff hits, but nothing else. Still scoreless. Enough wind to move the turbines here on the campus of the University of North Texas. Welcome back in to Denton, Texas. First baseman for the North Texas Mean Green, Kaylee Gamble, having a big year, hitting in that clean up spot and a big part of the defensive effort as well for North Texas. Gamble was someone the Mean Green counted on all last season. This season, she is played in 27 games and started in 27 games. She is a centerpiece of what UNT does. She hits fourth and holds down first base. Her slugging percentage is over 500, and her on-base percentage is over 400. First pitch swinging this one, lined foul. 
Down the third base side for Celeste Wood. She's the first baseman counterpart on the other side for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, the junior out of Muskogee. Just a little south of Tulsa, hitting 233 on the season. 0 and 2. And a really good outing so far by Mackenzie Childers. And North Texas head coach Rodney DeLong talked about how she's come on as the season's gone on. She's got really good stuff. Her velocity is up now, and she's finding the strike zone. That's a good combination. It's a tough balance to master, and sometimes it just takes time as the season goes on to know which pitches you're throwing well and which pitches you're throwing hard and in the strike zone, and for that to all come together. Oftentimes early in the season, one pitch is really working for you and the, and the other needs to come on. And then, then your off speed's working for you, but you need your fastball to be faster. And Childers is doing a really good job right now of balancing all of her skills. Tried to put down Wood here, but another foul ball. Back toward the parking lot as... Childers continues to work away from the slap hitting Celeste Wood from the left side. Emma Vickery, the sophomore catcher up next, followed by the designated player Kramer. This one way up top, but it was 0-2. Now just 1-2. and two. Childers tried to get Wood to chase, but ended up losing control of that one. It was... About three games ago, it was Childers once a new ball that things really started coming into form for North Texas's pitcher, Mackenzie Childers. She started to find the strike zone, and the strikeout-to-walk ratio started to elongate in the positive direction. And thanks to all that, she's the American Athletic Conference Pitcher of the Week and has been huge ever since North Texas started conference play. Another one, two. Lifted in the air, foul once more down to the bullpen area. Another one and two on the way. Again, this is just an enormous series between North Texas and Tulsa. Both teams five and one. Started out the season really well in conference play and trying to stay up at the top of the standings. This one hit off the fist into left center field. And trying to go for two is Wood. Great throw on the bag, and it's in time. Incredible throw from the left fielder, Molly Rainey. This Tulsa team is very aggressive on the base paths, and Wood thrown out, trying to turn a single into a double. The timing on that between Rainey and Wood was unbelievable. Rainey did such a good job of getting the ball in her glove quickly and making, she knew exactly where she was going with the ball and made the throw straight there. And what an impressive tag. When, when Tulsa rounded the first base, it didn't seem like there was a play at the bag and Mean Green made it happen and got the out. Throw and then Smith almost at the blind tag back over her shoulder and able to find Wood in time. So the first hit as this one is fouled off by Vickery. The first hit for Tulsa doesn't stay on the base paths for very long. The out goes nine to four after the single. And there's one down for Emma Vickery. Right down the heart of the plate, 0 oh and 2. Vickery's missed a little bit of time, and outstanding catcher that really led the way for this Tulsa team last year. Getting back in the lineup, grounds it over to first, and then unassisted play. Kaylee Gamble takes it herself. Two down for Kennedy Kramer. So far, Childers has faced the minimum despite giving up that one hit moments ago. North Texas has not been able to come up with any offensive power behind her. They have had three singles, but Mara Moore for Tulsa has been able to sit them down. It's the nine-hole hitter taking the first pitch strike. Kennedy 
Kramer, the designated player. 300 hitter this season, making her 21st start. It's 15 hits and 50 at bats. Fouled off. 0 oh and 2. And the way that Childers is working ahead of the batters certainly stands in contrast to how Mara Moore has been working behind the North Texas hitters. Home run and eight runs batted in for Kramer. Taking a lot off there, and Kramer did not offer one and two. And a power pitcher like McKenzie Childers with some incredible stuff. She tried to get Kramer way out in front of that. Here's the one, two. Waved at missed strike three. A leadoff single, but Celeste Wood is thrown out, trying to elongate it into a double. And the North Texas Mean Green have faced the minimum through three against this incredibly powerful Tulsa Golden Hurricane lineup. Through two and a half. North Texas Mean Green mowing them down. Welcome back into Denton. Tulsa Golden Hurricane, North Texas Mean Green scoreless as we head to the bottom of the third inning. Maura Moore on the mound, able to scatter three hits. And back to the top of the order for North Texas here to start the bottom of the third inning for Kat Ibarra. The right fielder has stepped into the starting lineup recently, at the top of the order, and done a really nice job and takes a first pitch ball. Transfer from UTSA. Has started the last three games and make it four now in right field. And over the past five games, six hits and four runs scored coming in. This pitch swung on and missed. It's one ball and one strike to Ibarra. On a single through the right side back in the first inning. Nice crowd on an absolutely gorgeous 68-degree Friday night. The 1-1, one, one, waved at and missed. 1-2 and two now to Ibarra. Ibarra grounded one through the right side last time up. Nora Moore seems to remember that. Staying out of Ibarra's comfort zone. The 1-2, off speed, catches the inside corner for a called strike three. There's one down. Here's another look, a high outside ball. Not necessarily a hitter's choice as far as pitchers, but still fell in the strike zone. Second strikeout for Mara Moore. She faces the two-hole hitter. Takes a first pitch strike, Morgan Medford. And Medford giving Rodney DeLong that shot in the arm as she comes into the lineup, really for the first time in her North Texas career after taking that Pitch off the wrist early in the season and breaking her wrist. She'd been out for quite a while. Medford in the air to left field, but it's played well and butted up against the line. Mackenzie Denson puts it away. Two up, two down. We're starting to calm things down. She gave up two singles to open up the second inning, but has retired five in a row since. Both pitchers and their fielding behind them has been really strong so far. That's one of the really big points for Tulsa this season. They've been about as good as you can be in the field as the first pitch is down low to Simon. Only 17 errors this season, and their fielding percentage of 976 is second best in the league right now. The 1-0 to Simon. It stays outside, 2-0. I think especially with the bases empty that Moore wouldn't give Simon, the 367 hitter coming in, anything to hit. Popped up. Center field. Measuring it up, putting it away. Haley Morgan, three up, three down. 
and Moore has retired six in a row. Tulsa and North Texas scoreless after three in ten. Sixth-year head coach Rodney DeLong of the North Texas Mean Green put together that really difficult non-conference schedule, but his team, in their first year in the American Athletic Conference, starting out with a 5-1 and one mark, but uh, he made an immediate splash when he came on the scene in Denton. DeLong has been outstanding so far in Denton. He even brought players with him. That's as sincere of a compliment as a player could give a coach. Is tagging along for the ride to UNT. Absolutely. <laughs> they really like playing for him. As the first pitch swinging, uh, nice uh, job by North Texas's Simon to get rid of it quickly. Denson, with her speed, thought she had beaten the throw, but not. Uh, but uh, she did not get there in time. And she grounds Simon out 6-3, to three, and Lee, it Morgan. continues to be a day where Mackenzie Childers is controlling this game from the circle. Two-hole hitter Morgan takes a first pitch strike, and in large part, thanks to Childers just coming out and throwing strikes. Morgan to fly out to right her first time around. Part of this Tulsa team that's been so hot of late, winning eight of their last nine. This one slapped in the air to center field. Measured well, put away by Jody Epperson. Morgan has two fly outs, two down. So back to Mackenzie Childers, who has faced the minimum. She has given up a hit, but player in question, Celeste Wood, is thrown out trying to extend it into a double. Here's Amani Edwards, who can change a game in a hurry, but lines it to short, and a great play, extending in the air for Simon to take away an extra base hit. And one, two, three, again, go the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Look at the extension. Simon says, absolutely not. <laughs> Simon says, that's funny. <laughs> Welcome back into Denton. Scoreless. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. And first pitch by Mara Moore to Kaylee Campbell, the veteran first baseman for the North Texas Mean Green outside for ball number one. Gamble struck out swinging to end the first inning. This pitch lifted back behind home plate and back and out of play. John Little alongside Smacker Miles. It's been a lot of fun tonight. A lot of good defense, good pitching so far as well. That Simon highlight was <laughs> an absolute highlight. And then you saying Simon says was also a highlight. And it was also an accident. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One, one. Low and away to Kaylee Gamble. You want to stay out of Gamble's wheelhouse, even when there's little to no wind. An all-conference player in Conference USA and looking to repeat the feat. Another Oklahoma native player. This hit in the air down the right field line, giving it a ride, but it is foul and out of play. Gamble just out in front of that one. Gamble in her fourth season with the Mean Green now, coming out of Oklahoma City's Westmore High School. Taking inside three balls and two strikes now as Kaylee Gamble, who has walked 21 times this season, tries to earn another one. It's one thing. Pitchers do not like to pitch to Kaylee Gamble. 3-2. On the outside corner for a called strike three. A filthy, filthy pitch by Mara Moore. Moore's pitch on the outside corner. Kaylee Gamble watches it, and the umpire says strike. It was right on the outside corner. A really well-placed pitch. You know, one thing for Kaylee Gamble, her batting average may not be there, but her on-base percentage, the best in her career. So she's getting on base, even if she's not picking up as many hits as normal as Michaela Smith fouls it away. 
Last year, she was the Mean Green home run leader. This year, she is second to Michaela Smith, batting right behind her. As Smith fouls it back once more. 0-2 oh to Michaela Smith. That hits the roof. Sounds like a little hail. Smith had nine home runs last year, five this season. And Smith, who's slugging 639 on the year, really challenging out for Mara Moore. Here's the 0-2, waved at and missed for strike three. So back-to-back -back strikeouts of Gamble and Smith by Mara Moore. There are two down. Now Moore is really starting to come into her own. This is a pitcher's duel so far tonight. That drop ball was beautiful. Right on the middle of the plate, but dropped out of the strike zone. Brings up Christensen. A little high. So Mara Moore has retired eight in a row now. Last player to get on base against her was Kaylee Christensen. With a single through the left side, back in the second inning, and she takes it just inside, 2-0. Oh. Two down, Mara Moore coming home, 2-0. Oh. And an excuse me swing, and an ends up in an out, Skaggs across to Wood, and Tulsa's Mara Moore has retired nine in a row now. Again, North Texas goes down in order, and we're scoreless through four in ten. Well, as Eleanor Roosevelt once said, America's all about speed. Hot, nasty speed. <laughs> and for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, they are all about it. Imani Edwards leading the league with 12 stolen bases. Haley Morgan, Abby Jones also in the top three as well. I appreciate the historic reference. Absolutely. I always learn from something when you're around, John. <laughs> and in comparison, the attempts on UNT side don't go over seven. So that tells you how aggressively Tulsa's running the bases. And, and aggressive, it's one thing to be aggressive. It's this is stroked into right field, the leadoff hit for Clara Skaggs. Skaggs on base for the second hit today, but it's going to be the first base runner actually for Tulsa. Here's another look at the single driven to the outfield. She gets on base safely. Here's another angle, two, right shallow Jones. right field, and there's no play at the bag. Like we were saying, it's one thing to be aggressive. It's another to be successful as this pitch is just off the plate. It's Abby Jones thought about bunting at it. Jones, the senior, struck out swinging back in the second inning. But Tulsa, on the base paths this year, they're 43 of 49 stealing bases. Skaggs, not one of their top steals players, however. And bunting through that one, Abby Jones, she went around one and one. Tulsa's won eight of nine coming in. They've won 14 of their last 17. Absolutely on a heater, including a win over a top 10 team in Oklahoma State, the 1-1. One -one. Bunted, third base side, and it does crawl foul right in front of Morgan at Medford. So now one and two with the leadoff runner on and nobody out. Skaggs on at first. Caitlin Bearpaw up next. It's the first base runner that Kenzie Childress has had to deal with. She's been nearly perfect. Abby Jones fouls it back. It'll stay one ball and two strikes. Jones fourth on the team in hitting coming in at 348. This one up high. Good choice to check that swing. Two and two now to Abby Jones. Jones has started every game this season for Tulsa, all 28. Up 
high again. And she's worked the count full, three and two. But Jones has only walked twice all season. Only struck out seven times. She makes a lot of contact. So the payoff pitch to Jones. Hit in the air, down the left field line, into foul territory, and it is grabbed by Molly Rainey. Skaggs scampers back into first. There's one down for Caitlin, Caitlin Bearpaw. The right fielder, number 25. So Mackenzie Childers, a little bit of a different mindset with a runner on, and at least from Childers' perspective, it's not one of the top steals players for Tulsa. Skaggs hasn't attempted a stolen base this season as Bearpaw swings and fouls one back 0-1. So it's not like having Edwards on with 12 stolen bases this season or Morgan or Jones, Bearpaw, striking out swinging. Her first time up back in the second inning. Part of a 1-2-3 second for Childers. The 0-1, that's lined, foul down the first base side. Just past the dugout, 0-2. Get a great look at our camera pro, fantastic crew early this season. You don't have to deal with the wind or the heat today, so it's like getting paid double. This one popped up. Short right field and it's an in-between ball that falls for a base hit. Two are on. It looked like Michaela Smith had a chance, but ranging back could not make the play. And the pop-up hit for Bearpaw puts runners at first and second with one out. Here is the fielding. It look I don't it, I, she's just a little short. At first I thought it might have been the sun, but I think she just didn't get there in time. And Abera, as he saw at the end there, Michaela Smith trying to give way to Catabara. And Abara not able to reach it either. A perfectly placed ball. There will be a runner down at second base for the Golden Hurricane. The potential go-ahead runner. Down at second, Tara Hall, senior out of Jenks, coming on at second base, and she gets the stink eye from Mackenzie Childers. Big, big moment for both these teams. Tulsa has not threatened at all until here in the top of the fifth inning, and it's a, it's a huge moment for Mackenzie Childers. This is a challenging moment for her with all of these stolen bases behind her as well. And even more impressively than the Golden Hurricanes number on the stolen bases is their percentage. Kennedy Kramer, 8 for 8. Kaylin Bearpaw, 10 for 10. And then another 11 for 11 from Haley Morgan. About 85% on the bases this season. It's impressive overall as a team. As the first pitch is down and outside to Celeste Wood. Wood, as you see, Hall there is the pinch runner at second base, the potential go-ahead run. Wood had a single into deep left center field first time around, but she was thrown out, trying to stretch it into a double. Fouls this one back, one ball, one strike. Big moment here for North Texas to be big defensively and in the circle, and for Tulsa, Golden Hurricane have had that killer mentality, that penchant for picking up big crooked numbers on the scoreboard and they'd love to have one here at the top of the fifth. Good start. That one is just low and away. Framed well by Gamble but Childers doesn't get the call. So it turns into a two and one count with Hall running down at second. The Speedy Jones or rather Bearpaw is at first. This one popped up. Nice job to see it by the catcher, Campbell, who knew right where it was, able to pick it out of the air. And there are two down for Emma Vickery. Here's the play between the catcher and the first baseman. Catcher comes up with it, makes a good play coming from behind the ball.
That is a pinch runner as well. Down at first base, that is Rouse for the Golden Hurricane. And there will be a pinch hitter here as well. Coming on to pinch hit is Kylie Nash. First pitch to Nash, waved at and missed for strike one. Nash is hitting 182 this season. Big moment for her with two down. Out of Three Rivers, Michigan. The 0 1 pitch in for a called strike and a big pitch by Childers. It's 0 2. Keep this game scoreless in the top of the fifth. Kylie Nash has other ideas for Tulsa. The 0-2, swung on and missed strike three. And North Texas and McKenzie Childers work their way out of a jam. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two left on base. Four and a half in the books, Tulsa. And North Texas, scoreless. Childers, a huge pitch to get out of the inning. Moore and Moore is in the circle for the Golden Hurricane. Through four innings, she's allowed three hits and earned four strikeouts. She has been dominant so far for Tulsa's defense, and they've played well behind her. So here's another look at those four strikeouts. And so far, it's been a pitcher's duel. Maybe with the exception of the second inning for North Texas, where they got the first two hitters on. And then for Tulsa, in the top of the fifth inning, where they had two on and one out. But, uh, other than that, yeah, these two pitchers have worked very, very clean. Tatum Sparks had a sacrifice bunt. She was out three to four back in the second inning to move those runners into scoring position. She did her job, hitting 346 this season. Designated player takes this one inside, a ball and a strike to Sparks. North Texas has won six of seven coming in. Tulsa has won eight of nine. Who's going to win this huge American series? This pitch is an attempted bunt. Remember, Sparks almost got on thanks to that sacrifice bunt last time. But bunts it foul, one and two. Sparks out of Shawnee, Oklahoma, just a little east of Oklahoma City. Transfer from Oklahoma State. One, two, and that is ripped back foul. She'll do it again at one and two. Sparks this season tied for the team lead in multi-hit games. She has five, and she's done that in a few less opportunities. Her hits have come in bunches. This one tapped down to third. Skaggs gets rid of it easily. One down here in the bottom of the fifth. What have you seen out of Mara Moore? Because like you said, it, it has turned into a pitcher's duel. I, I think you're absolutely right about that. And Moore is now retired the last 10 North Texas Mean Green players in order. I felt like she came out a little bit reserved, and then I noticed more ball movement as the innings went. It felt like she let loose a little bit, and her pitches moved more. But she's just been consistent. She hits the spots on the plate really well. She's inside. She's outside. She doesn't just do one of those two well. So her ball placement has been really strong. This one ripped in the air by Rainey, and coming on for it is... Center fielder Haley Morgan. You saw Amani Edwards with her speed going out. Thought she might be called into action. Had to throw on the brakes. Two up, two down. 11 straight retired by Mara Moore. Moore is having quite a week. The two hit shutout against the number four, number six team in the nation in Oklahoma State, depending on which poll you're going to look at. Three nothing win on Tuesday, and now really. Being cantankerous against the Mean Green as this one's popped up by Epperson on the infield. Skaggs puts it away. One, two, three. Once more, go the North Texas Mean Green. Mara Moore is in her back. We're headed to the top of six. 
Mackenzie Childers back in the circle for the Mean Green for the sixth inning. Through five, she allowed three hits and earned five strikeouts. A lot of those strikeouts came on the outside of the plate. She did a really good job with her ball movement. Her velocity was great, and she has been wildly consistent tonight. She has not given up a single easy at bat, and that is something she's improved on as the season's gone. Here she goes for the sixth inning. Earning this start on a Friday, and first pitch is outside for ball one to Kennedy Kramer, the designated player and the nine-hole hitter. But just in this game, in these five scoreless innings, Childers has lowered her ERA, which started at 4-4-6, coming into the game to 4-0-4 currently. That one just a little bit low, 2-0. Kramer struck out swinging to end the third inning. Remember that Childers faced the minimum through the first four innings, through the first 12 batters. Fouled back, one and one, or rather two and one, I should say. The fifth inning nearly got away as Childers did give up a leadoff single to Skaggs. And then a one-out single to Bearpaw. And after that, was able to induce Wood into a pop-up and Nash into a strikeout swinging. The 2-1 foul back 2-2 two two now to Kennedy Kramer. After Kramer, the top of the order, Denson and Morgan. And if necessary, Edwards for this high-powered Tulsa team. Childers deals out of the circle. And that one is down low. Now three balls and two strikes. Neither team has walked a batter yet. That pitch very low, but a believable ball, not necessarily a bad pitch. Payoff pitch. Tapped on the ground to second. Routine play for Michaela Smith. And there's one down for McKenzie Denson. By the way, we do have some defensive changes for North Texas this inning. The left fielder Molly Rainey has moved into right field for Kat Ibarra. And North Texas has brought Riley Nicholson off the bench to play left. First pitch low and away to McKenzie Denson as she was pulling out. Denson is grounded out twice in this one, once to third base and once to short. Denson who hit Second a lot last season for Tulsa, moving into the leadoff spot this year. And that change combined with others has helped ignite the offense. Good pitch on the outside corner, one and one. Here's another look at that last pitch, low and outside, gets the strike. Waved at and foul tapped at the plate by Denson. Goes to one and two. Denson this season with 40 hits to lead the team. Edwards second on the team with 36. Childers has only given up three hits in this matchup so far. Here's the one, two. And I'm not sure if she lost the grip or just, yeah, I think she did. Two balls and two strikes. Denson hitting 435 this season. Looking to spark a rally. The 2-2 two -two waved at and missed. Huge drop ball from McKenzie Childers for her sixth strikeout. Childers with a strikeout in each inning so far. She gets the swing on a low outside fielder, pitch. Nine, a really well-placed ball, tough to hit for a slapper coming from the inside of the box. And brings up Haley Morgan. It takes a first pitch, strike on the inside part of the plate. Morgan in this one has flown out a couple times. Once to right, and then once to left. Two down here in the top of the sixth inning. So we move into twilight. 
Hit past the pitcher. Good play to her left by Simon, and she whisks it across the diamond for the out. Three up, three down. And Tulsa still scoreless through five and a half in ten. She's gotten better as she has gone. Mara Moore in control for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane here in Denton. Welcome back in, John Little alongside Smacker Miles. The first time that North Texas and Tulsa have been able to get together as American Athletic Conference foes. And so far, anybody's game heading to the bottom of the sixth inning in a scoreless contest. Both teams 5-1, and one, tied at the top of the league heading into the day. And first pitch swinging, it's tapped down to first base. That is a fair ball, and Kat Ibarra does not agree, but it is picked up right along the line uh, by Wood to make the easy play, and Ibarra dejected as she goes back to play it. Well, are they going to say, let's see, she's still at the plate, maybe hoping for a replay. It hit the chalk. It's picked up. Maybe just across the line. We do have the ability to replay these, but replays sixth inning and on initiated by our crew. And they're going to go ahead and take a look at these. And so our first opportunity to see a reviewed play in this matchup. Abara would love to see her at bat continue. As we take a look at our first review of this matchup and uh, there are brand new video reviews uh, for this year, and our great crew here at the University of North Texas will give several different uh, opportunities to uh, the umpires to see this one. But uh, a ruling on the field will only be changed if there is indisputable video evidence to reverse the call. That's one of the, the big things they wanted to put up front in the rule book is we've got to have indisputable evidence. Two challenges for each coach, however, the crew chief can initiate a review at the beginning of the sixth inning, which is what has happened here. And the review has to be indicated before the next pitch as well. And so you see on this fair foul call, whether it's an out or a foul ball here. This is a great example of a useful opportunity to use the replay. It's a little bit unclear the first time you watch it from one angle, so why not let... The umpires look at it one more time and make sure they've gotten it right, especially in a game that is so low offensively and such a defensively focused game. This base runner could be a huge difference in the game. And I think the ball was starting to make its way foul, so it was a very good pickup there, of course, by Celeste Wood uh, as she had a, a great opportunity there to make the play. And after review, the uh, call is held up. And evidently that ball was at least on the line. No indisputable evidence to the opposite. And so a ground out, three unassisted for Kat Ibarra. And there is one down here in the bottom of the sixth inning for Morgan Medford, looking for that first huge moment in a North Texas uniform. Medford takes one up high. Great leader for Tarleton State as the Texans went from a Division II team to a Division I team over the four years that she was in Stephenville. The 1-0. Hit in the air, down the left field line, ranging for it, not able to make the play. It's a foul ball. Mackenzie Denson had reached it, but it just tips off of her glove. Here's another look at the foul ball. Out to left field, beyond the fair line. A good attempt by the left fielder to get there, but not quite able to make the play at the warning track. No error given. One and one. Up high, two balls and a strike. So Medford trying to get on. Sierra Simon up next. If one of them were to reach, Kaylee Gamble would have an opportunity. Medford, 0 of 2. Hits it in the air to left center field. Going back on it. And with no wind, Haley Morgan able to put it away easily in the left center field gap. And Sierra Simon, who has starred on the defensive end, comes to bat here in the sixth inning. 
It's natural to talk about her at bats, but we cannot not mention the unbelievable play she made in the field earlier. Shortstop headed to second base. There she makes the out at first, but here's a look at that unbelievable highlight for her to take away from this game. Simon turns on one. It's in foul territory down that third base side and up against the wall. Skaggs reaching for it, but not able to come up with it. And 0-1 now to Simon. But yeah, Simon has played excellently on the defensive side. Now she's trying to make her imprint here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And one more opportunity for North Texas to try to get on the board before Tulsa bats in the top of the seventh. The 0-1 off speed and inside from Mora Moore. Simon's been one of the stars of this game with her defensive effort. Now trying to be an offensive star as well. She's hitting 355 now on the season. The 1-1. One -one. Another pitch inside from Moore. 2-1. and one. Moore does not want to give Sierra Simon anything to hit. But Moore has retired 14 in a row as she rocks and deals. Down low, three and one. Simon on the verge of becoming the first player to earn a walk in this game. Three one pitch, see if Simon has the green light. Simon does and rockets it down the third base line, but foul three and two. Simon lined out to third base back in the first inning, turning on one, but Skaggs was equal to it. She also flew out to center field in the third inning. The payoff pitch from Moore. Tapped on the ground, too short. Edwards up with it, strong throw. It is just in time, Simon. Thinks that she was safe. Edwards up with it quickly, made the strong transition and the throw. Let's get one more look. Simon's going to delay to see if there's a replay of it all. And we'll get the benefit of the replay, whether or not these umpires take a look at it. Let's see what we see. The previous play is under further review. She's safe, and it's going to be reviewed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm normally supposed to wait for the analyst. But Smacker, I just couldn't wait. John, you should just get on headset and let them know. We, <laughs> we saw it up here. We saw all there is to see. And I think the indisputable video evidence will absolutely back you. Well, as we said earlier, you know, America is built on speed. And that's why Sierra Simon's standing at first base right now. And uh, this is going to get overturned. Simon all smiles. Talking to Jason Gwynn, assistant coach and first base coach for the North Texas Mean Green. And after review, safe is the call. And there's the freeze frame. That's all the evidence you need. They didn't take long. No. You were quicker, but they didn't take <laughs> they didn't take very long with that one. <laughs> so a big moment for North Texas. Mara Moore has been absolutely sparkling over the last three innings plus as Moore retired 14 in a row. Looked like it was going to be 15 before Sierra Simon was able to ease out that infield single. And instead of gamble here, North Texas will pinch hit and they'll bring Celine Donahoe, the junior from Duncanville, on to bat. Donahoe coming up from the right side, trying to make a big impact in this game. This is the first time she's been a pinch hitter this season. She's played in eight games, but she's started all of those. What a big moment as she takes a first pitch for a ball. Donahoe from... Just about an hour south of here in Duncanville, the 1-0. -oh. 
Low and inside, make it 2-0 oh now. Michaela Smith is on deck. Mara Moore, who is absolutely cruising, runs into an infield hit. Can she get out of it? The pitch hit off the fist left side, and easy play for Skaggs to end the inning. And through six, we are still scoreless. A dominant effort by Mara Moore and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane as we go to the seventh. Sun setting in Denton. A beautiful, beautiful night. The American Athletic Conference softball standings. We had a four-way tie coming into the day, but Charlotte lost to East Carolina. So Charlotte is now 5-2. You got Florida Atlantic up top with these two teams, Tulsa and North Texas, and Wichita State, who will host the conference tournament coming up next month, or rather in May, I should say, at 4-2. and two. UAB, South Florida, UTSA, and then ECU picked up that first win today, and then Memphis at 0-6. Back to play here in the top of the seventh inning. John Little back alongside Smacker Miles and our entire ESPN crew. And this is a nice player to start out the seventh with, uh, with Tulsa and Imani Edwards. She's 0 for 2 today. She's due. Edwards on the ground, two second. Should be an easy play, and it is. One down. Clara Skaggs coming up as McKinney, McKenzie Childress has been outstanding. You know, coming into this Third game, baseman, if you look at the last Clara 10 Skaggs. games for North Texas, her numbers have really come around. Uh, during that time, she had started three games and had four appearances over those 10 games. And 2-0 and with a 2.72 ERA. Her strikeout to walk ratio is up over two to one. She's dealing. And now, if you look at the last five appearances for Childers based on what she's done tonight, 32 strikeouts versus 12 walks. That's outstanding. 1-0 is a little bit low, though. 2-0 now to Clara Skaggs. Reached base last time on a single. We knew Childers was hot coming in, but she has absolutely proven that tonight. She has been so good from start and now into the seventh inning. Tough beginning to the season for Childers, but she has turned it around. The 2-0 pitch. That is in for a called strike. Two and one. Up next to Abby Jones for Tulsa. You get a look at Skaggs, the third baseman. She's played a nice game at the hot corner and one of two. Strikeout. Swinging back in the second inning. First strikeout victim of Childers. This one on the ground to first. Well foul. Two balls, two strikes. This could be a long day if these two pitching staffs continue on the way they have. And so far, it's just been one pitcher for each team. Childers has been efficient with her pitches in this outing. Pitch count at 80. Not too bad through six and a third. Six strikeouts. No walks. Wave and a miss. Make it seven strikeouts. Clara Skaggs down, waving. Two down. Skaggs took a big old swing at it and didn't make contact. A huge moment for Childers and UNT late in this game. And it brings up Abby Jones. Jones hitting better than 350 coming in, but 0 of 2 in this game. And takes this one outside for ball number one. The Childers, a rough fifth inning, but worked around two singles. And now has retired seven in a row again as she starts to find her groove. Strike on the outside corner, and Jones turns away from it. Not too enthused, it's one and one. Childers pitch outside. A consistent call that this crew has given. Looking for that same pitch, but nice job by Jones to stay off of it that time. Jones the strikeout, the foul out. Trying to get a two out rally going. Two and one. Childers deals. That one is on the outside corner. 
as Childers just tries to paint ever so slightly. Childers has been unbelievable hitting her spots. That outside corner has been a friend of hers tonight. Two, two. On one hop, right back to Childers. The underhand to first, three up, three down for Tulsa. And we go to the bottom of the seventh in Denton. A pitcher's duel. Can North Texas come up with the one run to win it? Great pitching effort, great defensive effort by the two top teams in the American Athletic Conference. Tulsa and North Texas, both five and one, coming into the opener of this three-game series, and we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, leading it off for North Texas, Michaela Smith, who smacks one foul down the third base line, trying to get things started here in the bottom of the seventh. McKenzie Smith, or Michaela Smith, I should say, one of the players in this game for North Texas with a hit. She's one of two. Smith. Had a single back in the second inning and advanced to third before being stranded there at the end of the inning. Here's the 0-1. And fouled off again by Michaela Smith, 0-2. Kaylee Christensen is due up next for North Texas. Tatum Sparks after that. Michaela Smith capable of ending this game with one swing of the bat. Three home runs in the last 10 games. Here's the 0-2. Smith taps it to short. Can she leg it out? Not this time. Imani Edwards with the strong throw. One down for Kaylee Christensen. John Little back with Smacker Miles. Smacker, what are your thoughts about this game so far? It's been an unbelievable defensive outing for both teams, and both teams have proven that they have a lot of talent and why they're at the top of the conference early in conference play. First pitch is a called strike on the outside quarter to Christensen. And you've got two pitchers that are just absolutely on top of their game right now. Both pitchers are commanding the strike zone really well. They're both hitting spots and making it tough on batters to put together good at-bats. You know, one to Christensen. Inside, one ball, one strike. And that wasn't always the case early for Mara Moore, but she has found the strike zone. Christensen, by the way, one of two. She had a single in the second inning and then grounded out to third in the fourth. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Outside and high, two balls and a strike. But after struggling with the strike zone early and giving up some hits, Moore has been incredibly steady. She has retired 16 of the last 17 for Tulsa. And that's how we're scoreless into the bottom of the seventh. The 2-1. It's popped up. Could be trouble. Short center field, but coming on and making the catch. Haley Morgan. There are two down. Morgan's ball goes into shallow center field. Looking like it could be a problem for all three fielders to communicate and decide who makes the play. Center field calls it, and the Golden Hurricane get the out. And not much win tonight. Tatum Sparks coming up and takes a first pitch strike on the outside part of the plate. Sacrifice bunt for Sparks in the second inning and also bounced out to third to start the fifth inning. She's 0 of 1. The 0-1 pitch from Moore. And it's in for a called strike, 0 and 2 to Sparks. Sparks hitting 217 over her last 10 matchups. The 0 2 pitch. Sparks fouls one off. Sparks for the season. Two home runs, 10 RBI. She does have that power, but it is now a winless night here in Denton. The 0-2. Sparks takes it outside. Mara Moore 
facing 24 batters. Striking out four through six and two thirds. Rocks and deals. Hit in the air. Left field. This is foul. Going over to give it a look, but watching it go bullpen as Mackenzie Denson it's still one and two. High tension softball in Denton right now is we're on the cusp of extra innings. Moore comes home. Nice job to spoil one by Tatum Sparks. If she can reach, Molly Rainey is on deck. Mara Moore, part of this deep Tulsa pitching staff and just an absolute bulldog. The one, two, chopped out in front of the plate, but it's going to roll foul. Just that backspin on it caused it to check up by about a foot, and it will stay one and two. Two down for Moore, up Moore. complete game two hitter against Oklahoma State at home. Back in Tulsa on Tuesday. Another one, two. Hit in the air to the left side of the infield and an easy play on the flare for Amani Edwards who makes two of the outs in the inning. North Texas goes one, two, three. And we go to extra innings in Denton. McKenzie Childers back in the circle for the extra innings through regulation. Childers was outstanding, seven strikeouts, pitching all seven innings, giving up only three hits. Her ERA has gone down as the night has gone. She has been dominant and 50% of this defensive showdown. Yeah, I think she likes pitching at home. She had a no-hitter in an extra inning win at home against New Mexico in late February here in Denton, the only extra inning game this season for the University of North Texas, and they're 13 and 5 overall in extra inning games in the Rodney DeLong era. For Tulsa, looks like their first time in extra innings this season. And as you mentioned, Mackenzie Childers has been sparkling in her 1 0 pitch here. Check swing, but she went around. Kaylin Bearpaw is one of two with a strikeout and a single. Looks to the heavens. Did not like going around on that one. Childers has lowered her ERA to 390 thanks to this ongoing three hitter. On the ground to first, easy play for North Texas. Gamble takes a step on the bag, one down in the top of the eighth inning. The first baseman, number 13. And Mackenzie Childers is really on her game and making Rodney DeLong look very, very smart to give her the Friday night start. Coming home to Wood, and first pitch to Celeste Wood is on the outside corner for a called strike. Wood had the first single of the game, but was thrown out trying to stretch it into a double back in the third inning. She also popped out foul to the catcher in the fifth. The 0-1, line foul down the third baseline, 0-2 to Celeste Wood. The confident way these pitchers are going right now, it just seems like one of those nights where the hitters have little to no chance against them. And you wonder how the teams are going to break through. We had young fans in the stands. They're going to be pulling out sleeping bags here in a minute. <laughs> you had a youth team from Oklahoma make the trip. you got to love that. Seeing some high-level softball, the 0-2. Slap foul once more, another 0-2. The coming to Celeste Wood. Kinsey Childers putting on a pitching display. Wood trying to break up the shutout. Another 0-2 offering. Lined and in for a base hit to left field. That one had eyes in between the lunging Medford and Simon. An 0-2 single for Celeste Wood. Here's a look at Wood's single. She gets right between shortstop and third base into left field. 
really well-placed hit. She earned that single, one of very few hits tonight in what's been a feature duel and a very impressive outing for the defensive in the American. Yeah, neither team has committed an error. Perfect defense so far behind these two pitchers as Vickery shows bunt, takes it low. Emma Vickery, the catcher, is back in the lineup. After missing some time early this season, stepping in from the right side. She's 0 for 1, though, with a strikeout. 1-0. That's bunted in the air. Lunging play, and what a play by Kaylee Gamble. Two down. Unbelievable play by Kayla Gamble. She is crouched down and then nearly meets the catcher, makes the diving play. She was guarding more inside near the mound. She dives. What a heads up play and a very fast decision. You've got to worry about the runner coming in as well or the hitter coming in trying to run down to first base in Vickery in the first pitch here to Kennedy Kramer is in for a called strike, but just a beautiful play by Kaylee Campbell. Such a quick first step. In a little bit, and she was looking for the bunt and executed. This one just inside, one and one now to Kennedy Kramer. Mackenzie Childers has not needed much defensive help. That was a key play made in foul territory by Kaylee Gamble to not give Emma Vickery another chance. 1-1. One, one. That one's a little low. 2-1 and a, one. now to Kennedy Kramer. Kramer the designated player. She's 0 for 2. Strikeout and a ground out. Trying to get on board so Denson can come up. Pitch, framed well, but just inside, and a rare three ball count by Mackenzie Childers, three and one. Childers comes home, and that is a fastball that is in there. She brought all of it. And Childers, who has really been upping her velocity lately, puts one in there to make it a full count against Kramer. 3-2. And foul tapped on the rise pitch. Kramer just able to stay alive. Kramer can reach Mackenzie Denson. Leadoff hitter would be up next. Payoff pitch, hit in the air, down the right field line. Another chance for the first baseman in foul territory, and Gamble makes the play. North Texas Mean Green getting defensive in the top of the eighth. Bottom of the eighth next. Beautiful twilight look. Looking off to the north. And the Northwest here in Denton as Tulsa and North Texas have taken us to extra innings. Bottom of the eighth we go. North Texas and Tulsa locked in a pitcher's duel. Until this moment, giving it a ride, it is gone! Molly Rainey, a walk-off solo shot on the first pitch of the bottom of the eighth. Mean Green, victorious over Tulsa. My jaw is still dropped. When it hit the outs, when it hit the outfield lines, I thought the lights were actually messing up, not just being decorative out there. What an unbelievable, timely home run. Rainey ends the game on a walk-off. An unbelievable Friday night start and first win of the series for the Mean Green. She knew it, it came off the bat, didn't she, Smacker? That big smile on her face. 
and rightfully so. She struck that ball with a lot of confidence and knocks it straight into, as you said, a very confident territory. She knew that one was out of here. Her third home run of the season. And North Texas is 6-1 and one in conference play. Pouring onto the field after a huge win and one where both teams pitched incredibly well, played incredibly defensively. But it's Molly Rainey, the left fielder, who ends it. Your thoughts? Like you said, Molly Rainey ends it, and really that's all the difference in the game we saw. Neither team threatened a lot. Both pitchers were phenomenal and consistent and made, pitch, made batters really work for anything they got. So an unbelievable ending to a very evenly matched opening night of this series. How much confidence does this give a North Texas team that struggled through conference play, uh, non-conference play? Conference play is so special in general. Conference play is a, a new season for all of these teams. They want to win and be competitive and win games in the American. So this is the beginning of that. And you mentioned the standings earlier. And for North Texas, they move up again. They're now 6-1 and one as Molly Rainey cranks one, her 19th career home run and her second during conference play. North Texas wins it 1-0 over an incredibly good Tulsa team. Remember, this is a Tulsa team that just dispatched of top 10 Oklahoma State on Tuesday with that same pitcher, Mara Moore, on the mound as we look at the game summary and our eyes are drawn immediately to those starting pitchers. And how similar their stats are. Five hits to three hits, one error to no errors, four to six strikeouts. And in the end, it's Molly Rainey who gets it done. Molly Rainey, the walk-off home run. Mackenzie Childers, the incredible game. The American Conference Pitcher of the Week gets the win in the duel. So for Smacker Miles and our entire ESPN crew, this is John Little. Giving you the final score one more time from Lovelace in Denton with the North Texas Mean Green walk it off. 1-0 over the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and they're archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the American Athletic Conference and ESPN.